It's a little bit hot today. Not exactly the kind of day that most people are craving like a lasagna, but maybe cold pasta salad. A lot of people have asked me to ask Ava for a pasta salad recipe, but then I realized I've never seen her make a pasta salad. Harper, uh, yes, in Italy we have pasta salad. The people in Italy cook pasta salad. Personally, I don't like pasta salad because in my opinion, it has several problems. This is a pasta salad that I got at the store here in America, but what you find in Italy is pretty, pretty much the same. So let's investigate. As you see, it's like the pasta doesn't stay. It's completely mushy, it's completely destroyed. The point here is that after you cook the pasta, and you let it sit in the fridge for one day, one day and a an half, then the pasta becomes mushy, it's not al dente anymore. After three minutes, pasta is not al dente anymore. But in Italy we have other dishes that resemble a pasta salad, but they are not a pasta salad. They are perfect to bring with you at work. They are cold, you can put in the fridge. They are perfect for your meal prep, but they don't have the problem of pasta salad. Do you want to show me some of them and I can pick which one is my favorite? Ti Albert. So our first alternative pasta salad is this. Uh, what is that? This is uh, farro arpe. I think that in English you call it uh, barley. Oh, barley. And in the past it was, use, was used a lot in the Italian cuisine. Barley is cooked uh, more or less like pasta, which means that we need a pot full of water, then we cook uh, the barley until it is uh, cooked but al dente. I'm going to use some provolone, sharp provolone. Then, if you can't find a sharp provolone, you can use scamorza, you can use mozzarella, you can use also very good cheddar if you have it on your hands. How do you say? If you have it on hand? Yes, if you have it in the fridge. <laughs> had barley soup. That might be the only way I've ever eaten barley. Well, let's see if this barley salad is as al dente as you claim it is. Do you have a dab tarper? Not really, no. Buon, buon appetito. appetito. Uh, that's really good. But? There's no but. There's no but. That's very good. It's perfect. And I can't imagine the barley getting soggy. It can't get Doesn't it. seem like it would. It's a summer dish. You can make in advance. You can keep in the fridge for three, four days. And it will be always gorgeous, amazing, delicious, al dente. It's 
not really a pasta salad, but that's maybe the best pasta salad I've ever had. But I know you have a few other alternatives to show me. A few moments later. This is so good. Okay, sorry, on to the next one. Do we have to do others? Can we just, this, this is it. This is just this is the beginning. Just, be just this, do this. This is just the beginning, Harper. It gets better with every bite. <laughs> Harper. You know what, tomorrow it will be much better. I believe you, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to find out. Are you ready to reveal our second pasta salad substitute? Polenta. I'm going to season my polenta with some uh, sumac. Now I know you can think that this is from uh, the Middle East. You say Middle East, huh? Middle East. Yeah. Now I know that you can think that this is just from the Middle East, but that's not true because in Sicily we have a lot of what we call sommacco and it's the same spices. This is a very lemony citrus taste and I think that it works pretty well with my dish. When the polenta is cooked, we spread it on a baking tray and we let it completely cool down for about at least one hour, one hour and a half. Because if you put the vegetables that you are boiling in water and ice, they don't cook anymore. This one is very intriguing. I love polenta. I've had it, you've kind of like roasted it for me before. And I think I posted a picture on Instagram. Follow us at Pasta Grammar, by the way. And a bunch of Italians were like, Harper, you gotta try fried polenta. This is my first. But we have uh, the asparagi, uh, how do you say in English? Asparagus. 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 Asparagi. Asparagi. And we have the salmon. It's a different salad. Clearly. It's a different salad, but it's a salad because all the elements are combined together. You can eat without any problem cold. You can prepare this today, eat tomorrow, the day after. And believe me, the fried polenta will be always al dente. Okay. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. This time is my turn. Mamma mia. Okay, all those people who told me to try fried polenta, you were a thousand percent correct. Asparagus and salmon together are a given. Then you add fried polenta that by itself is a gift from God. It's amazing. Yeah, what is it about salmon and asparagus? I wonder who the first person was to put salmon and asparagus together. Fried polenta salad. Who knew? It's time for Ava to reveal her next pasta salad alternative. So what's under mystery bowl number three? Bread? You're gonna make a bread salad? A sort of. That's cool, bread is my favorite vegetable. It's a grain apple, it's a carbo. No, it's a vegetable, I'm pretty sure. 
It's a first course. Are you sure it's not a vegetable? Albert, it's bread. The bread is as his own category. It's bread. Are you sure it's not a vegetable? Oh, Albert. This is still bread. This is bread. This is real bread. It's not uh, wonder bread. It's not chemical brioche. It's bread. You need bread made by wheat, flour, water, and salt. That's it. And yeast. Uh, if you do sourdough. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I will talk this for uh, more or less one minute because I don't like the mushy taste. Al dente stale bread. Everything al dente is much better. familiar with the wonderful, magical, miracle that is stale bread and how Italians use it. For instance, and we should have done this in our last video, in our ricotta video, one of the best things you can possibly eat is this same stale bread with fresh ricotta, right hot, like it was just cooked, skimmed off the top of the way, and then drizzled on the bread. You let the bread soak up the juices. Maybe one of the best things I've ever eaten. But even so, I never imagined you were gonna make a bread salad today. Have you ever heard of panzanella? Is that like puccinello? No, Arper panzanella is a dish from the center of Italy, most from Tuscany. And it's a salad made with bread and vegetables. We have our version in the south of Italy that we call cialedda. I'm fascinated. Now, this is one where I'm like, surely this bread by now, I mean, this has sat for a while, is mushy. Oh, Arper. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. No. Tell me that this bread no. is mushy. It's kind of perfect. This bread becomes soft. Gooey and soft on the outside, but with like a satisfying, just like soft bite to it. Oh, I don't know, this might be, this might be better than the barley. Okay, you guys can't see, but Ava and I right now are engaged in an unspoken competition. <laughs> we both know what's happening here. We're both trying to pick out the delicious pieces of bread she goes for one and I quickly try to get one. I'm trying to get two at a time. We're both trying to get the bread. We're almost out of bread. Which you know it. You know it. Which means how good is this bread? You know if it. We leave the mozzarella and it's the bread. All right. I doubt very much you're going to find anything as good as that, but I'll let you try. Mystery box number four. Potato. Potato salad. You're gonna make a potato salad? I'm going to make a potato salad Italian style. I boil the potato until the potato is uh, tender, which means that I can uh, go inside with a fork, but it should be still very, very firm, because otherwise it's too much. I let the onion uh, sit in the vinegar for about 30 minutes, uh, one hour, and now they are completely sweet. If you peel the potatoes before you boil it, uh, the potatoes will absorb all the water and we end up with uh, natural mashed potatoes.
I had quite a few potato salads in my day, but none that looked quite like this. This Alper is the famous insalata pantesca. Pantesca. Si, sí, pantesca. Pantesca means from pantelleria. I've never heard of it. Capperi di pantelleria. Boo. It's in the Olean Island. It's an island. Anyway, this is uh, Sicilian. Oh, S Sicilian. Why didn't you say so? Sicily. I've heard of that. Pay attention because people from Pantelleria, they remember you. <laughs> but this is the way in which in Italy we make insalata di patate, potato salad. Buon appetito! Buon appetito. Oh, that's so weird. I can actually taste something underneath all the mayonnaise. There isn't a mayonnaise. <laughs> Here we make potato salads. It's primarily slathered in mayonnaise. Not that I have anything wrong against mayonnaise. I like mayonnaise, but you tend to not be able to taste anything other than mayonnaise. Here you can taste the potatoes, you can taste the olives, you can taste the onion, you can taste the tomatoes, you can taste the capers. Oh, that's super good. It has a lot of the same ingredients to the bread salad. Onion and tomatoes and olives. I really thought that it was just gonna be like that, but with potatoes. It's completely different. Anyone who's had any kind of potato salad knows that the potatoes are not gonna get soggy. What that bit? I'm trying to think which is my favorite. This is getting harder. You want to show me one more? Yes, Arpir. Also because we miss an ingredient that we need to use. This time, the alternative of pasta salad that I'm going to show you is rice. Oh, you've made rice salad for me before. But this time, Arpir, I'm using riso venere. It is the Italian black rice. to make uh, not a traditional Italian dish. I'm going to use uh, avocado and pineapple. Yes, pineapple. I don't like it on pizza, but it doesn't mean that I don't like pineapple. smile. This is unexpected. The rice is an, uh, an Italian rice, one of the 150. Avocado, we grow in Italy avocado, in Calabria, in Sicily, it's full. Shrimp, we have shrimp in Italy. Maybe we don't have pineapple, but give us 10 years, we start to produce also pineapple. Yeah, you've shown me like a basic rice salad before, which you can watch up here, one of these corners, somewhere. But boy, this is quite an interesting take. All right, bon appetito. Bon appetito. <laughs> That's really good. And I want to point that this kind of dish, for example, you can't make with the arborio rice, carnaroli rice, because they are too starchy. Oh. Well, you need a rice that is like, how do you say, keep. Separate. It, yeah, the rice doesn't all sort of stick together in a gooey way, kind of like a risotto would, you know? The rice would be always at the end. That's the great benefit of a rice salad compared to a pasta salad. So, Arpin, what's your favorite? 
I think I gotta go with the potato salad. Which is funny because I've never once liked potato salad in my entire life. I've always hated potato salad. But now... Guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope we've given you some ideas for what to eat on a hot summer day. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. Sam Juan made a beautiful plate of pasta a la puttanesca. That is a Juan beautiful plate of pasta. This pasta grammarian joined us on not Juan, but two <laughs> pasta grammar tours and it's coming with us on a third. Ciao, Juan. <laughs> Ciao, Juan. If you'd like to become a Pasta Grammarian, then hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar, and tag us in a picture if you try any of these recipes. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye. Ciao. On a little baby, where you get those eyes? I got a complexion that I realize. Proviamo a suonare da me. Si. On a little baby.